Welcome to another episode of Off the Plugin Chain. I'm your host, Dr. Tom. Today's video is going to be about something I call the fiddle round effect. But first, I'd like to talk about a few things that I mentioned in a few of my other videos. A couple of episodes ago, I performed a blind test on some LA2A plugins, and I just wanted to drive home a few points that I don't think I made clear enough in that episode. First, you don't need to agree with the person who's doing the blind test if it isn't you. The purpose of the blind test is simply for you to decide which plugin sounds better. So you need to trust your ears. And I've watched some other people do these on YouTube and I, I left kind of scratching my head thinking, you know, that didn't sound as good to me as what they thought. And so you don't want to second guess yourself. The purpose of these tests is for you to evaluate what sounds better yourself. So ultimately you need to trust your own ears. Secondly, and I think I talked about this just briefly in that episode, was that one of the benefits of the blind test is so that you can evaluate whether a cheaper, more affordable plug-in might sound better than an expensive one. And you're able to do this by keeping the relative loudness of the plugins about the same. And then since it's a blind test, you're not led to make a prejudgment as far as which plugin's better based on what brand it is or the you know how slick your user interface is that kind of thing so just a couple things I wanted to mention about the blind test let's see moving on last episode I discussed five ways that you can increase audio volume output in OBS studio and there was one way that I didn't mention that I think I should so when you create a video and you're screencasting ultimately you're probably going to end up putting your video into your chosen video editor so I use Caden Live as my video editor, and Caden Live allows you to do some corrective audio editing. So th these next couple slides are specific to Caden Live, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about here. And you might, if you use a different editor, then you could see what what works in, in that particular editor. Most of them have some audio correction capability. Caden Live allows you to insert a gain effect that you can use to increase your volume level. They've also got something called volume. It's dependent on something called keyframing and what that enables you to do is it's almost like volume automation in a DAW. It allows you to change whether part of the clip is is louder and then you decrease the loudness and go back up again. For me personally I haven't needed to use that and what I just wanted to be able to do is adjust the volume when I'm playing musical examples because I don't want my voice necessarily to be louder. So what you can do is in Caden Live at least you can create clips and if you create clips then you can do that and it won't change the you can use that so that you don't change the volume of your entire track and so in Caden Live there's a tool they call it the razor tool it looks like scissors if you click on that and then you you place it on your your timeline you can create clip boundaries I take the scissor and then you, you click it here and you click over here so here's the musical example and now that's essentially a clip within the track and so then clicking on this single clip allows you to selectively apply an audio effect to just that clip instead of the overall track because like I said I don't necessarily want to increase my voice I want the musical examples to be louder once you do that you create clips then Caden Live has an audio mixer so after you create the clip, you can drag an audio effect from the effects tab over to the clip, and then you can edit the audio in Caden Live's audio mixer. And so some of these things like the effects tab and whatnot, you could refer to the Caden Live user manual that's online or Google it, whatever. So I'm not going to go over all those little details. If you create clips, then you can drag the effect over to the clip, and then you can uh, edit it in the mixer. And so this graphic here is showing this is the mixer and the arrow is pointing to the gain effect and so you can change the gain effect by either scrolling up and or down with your mouse if you're using a mouse or you can move the slider left to right and then that'll increase it as well my mouse I, I use a wireless mouse it has a good setup where I can use the scrolling function I've found that using the slider sometimes it's just uh, the movements you you make by using the slider are, are 
too large. So I found this the scrolling can actually uh, enable you to do finer editing uh, in a quicker fashion. So again, it depends what your setup is, whatever works for you. Anyways, I just kind of wanted to briefly mention those editing capabilities in Caden Live. So now, without any further ado, let's talk about what I call the fiddle around effect. So many audio effects plugins have several knobs and dials and that can be really intimidating. So being able to configure a new plug plugin or one that you've had for that matter that you're just getting back to, it can be daunting with all those knobs and dials. So what do you do? How do you start? What I found is that although effects plugins can have a lot of knobs and dials and whatnot, Many plugins have what we call a sweet spot that you can dial the, in the plugin with just a little effort. And these sweet spot plugins may not always have a lot of presets, but it's okay because you probably won't need them. Once you dial in that sweet spot for whatever project you're working on, then it doesn't matter if you're using uh, presets. I tend to like plugins that at least have some presets because it gives you a, a launching off point or a starting point. But um, if, if you find that you've got plugins that don't have presets, then you really are going to have to consult some information sources, you know, try to figure out what, what all these things do. If you're working on a compressor, you've got attack and release and ratio and just how what is it that those things all interact. So I'm not going to get into all of that in this video, but if you've got just even a little bit of familiarity with how to use audio effects plugins, then you should be able to fiddle around with the knobs on these plugins and easily find the plugin sweet spot. And so this is what I call the fiddle around effect. If you've worked with some plugins a little bit, then when you get a new plugin or one that you're coming back to, you should be able to adjust some of the parameters, maybe start with a preset, but then adjust the parameters and kind of dial in just the, the sound that you're looking for. And that's what I call the fiddle around effect. If you find that you're fiddling around and you can't find the sound that you want without consulting a manual, then that plugin might not be right for you you might want to skip that plugin and check out another one. And what I'm advocating here isn't that, you know, if, if you don't get it on the first shot that you should abandon it. There should be some kind of workability where you can just approach it and get some type of result out of it without necessarily having to hit the books. But that said, where can you find information about how to use effects plugins? So before you start fiddling around, you should know a little bit about how audio effects work. And so where can you find this kind of information? One of the best ways to approach this type of problem, which uh, I think a lot of people would probably, you know, do just as a starting off point, is you could Google something using the phrase, how to use audio effects plugins. That's a good way to start. You could search YouTube using the same phrase. Another good option is that you could refer to your audio editor's user manual. So nowadays, most of those are in PDF format. Check out your audio editor's user manual. And then you could always read books. That's a great way to gain information. Uh, the same principles that were implemented first in hardware gear are usually applied to virtual audio effects plugins. Some books that I would recommend, there's this one, Basic Effects and Processors. It's by Paul White. He was the editor of Sound on Sound magazine for many years, and he wrote a, a many different books. The Basic Effects and Processors book is actually a kind of stripped-down version of this one called uh, Home Recording Made Easy. So maybe you don't need that entire book. That's why I, I like this basic effects and processors and it's small and it's, I just use it just basically as a reference source. It's hard to know everything all the time but it's good to know where to get information when you need it. That's just a little uh, bit about how you can find some information so that you can uh, apply that on with your audio effects plugins and that brings us to the crux of this video which is our example here the Reckon Trans Reckon Transient Shaper. And I featured this in my top five plugins video. And I'd mentioned in that one that I thought it was a sweet spot plugin. This plugin doesn't have many presets. It really doesn't. When I first uh, was evaluating it, I thought, wow, there's what can I really do with this? And there's only a few knobs to adjust. But once you kind of get some familiarity, uh, you got the attack and sustain side for the transients. There's this attack knob and then a sustain. There's a dry wet knob here. 
And then there's just a couple things that you need to be aware of uh, on, on both sides, the attack and sustain side. There's a sensitivity and then a, a length uh, knob. And really it doesn't take a whole lot that you could use this to kind of dial in a really good sound. So is this plugin limited by not having many knobs or could it be a sweet spot plugin? I guess I've already said that I think it is. So let's check it out and see if I'm right. Okay, so here we are in Studio One and I've got a tech house loop loaded in and then I've got the Trans Reckon Transient Shaper uh, on the track and we're going to take a look at it. Here it's set on default and there's some different presets. There aren't a whole lot actually, but uh, scrolling through these, you can use it on a bus. There's a, well, there's there's a few more, but anyways, you start off with default, and when flat is clicked, then it's using the attack detection from this side, and then you've got the sustain over here, and so the attack section will detect the transients, and you've got the sensitivity, and then the the length parameters here, and so having flat selected it's just taking the information from the attack section and it, it's applying it to the sustain so what i'd like to do is if you click on listen first then it zeroes in on the transients and then when you take it off you can see how the whole loop is affected so let's give it a whirl and let's see what happens Okay, so going through the paces with it, you could tell that just by listening to the transients alone without the sustain section, you could zero in on different aspects of the loop. The hi-hats came out a little bit more prominent when that was on. The limit section obviously is going to increase the loudness of the, the loop, so I would take that off at least initially. Go back to putting listen on. So it zeroes in on just the attack section. You can change the setting of the sensitivity and the length a little bit. We take the listen off again. Can instantly tell how how much fuller it sounds. Put the limit back on, and it's got a little bit more punch. So, anyways, you've only got really three different parameters on each side. You've got the sensitivity, length, and then attack. You can change the dry wet setting. You'll notice that there's this kind of sweet spot to this one. You turn some of these down and then you turn it up where it's sort of at like two o'clock, one to th one to three o'clock on, on these. Um, they don't have to be exact on both sides but you can definitely tell there's a little bit more punch and we just turn the listen back on. So there it's zeroing in on the transients. I'm take the limit off 
So there it is in isolation. And if we go by the sustain picking up the attack information purely uh, from that side, and that's how that sounds. And then if we take listen off, you can definitely tell it's a little little punchier. The hi hats stand out a little bit more. And put limit back on. I like to take the flat off. You get a little bit more flexibility where you can you can change these parameters a little bit. So there's definitely a range here. I'd say that somewhere between 35 and maybe 50 or 48 seems to be kind of where you end up zeroing in. Maybe a little bit more for the sustain side. It's a really cool plugin. You can just you can tell how it, just by changing just a few different parameters here, you can get it to lock in a little bit more punchy. That's not bad. Maybe it doesn't have to be over 40. So it's a really cool, really cool plugin. There isn't a whole lot that you have to to do to to change the parameters on this to dial in a, a pretty good sound. So, so that's it. That's the uh, trans reckon transient transient shaper by EA Reckon. Definitely a sweet spot plugin. It's got some good settings to get you started, but there's not a whole lot that you have to worry about with it. It's a really quick and easy way that you can punch up your drums, and then it also, you know, as you could tell from the example, it gets a little bit punchy too on the hi-hats so that the hi-hats stand out a little bit better get a little bit more sizzle maybe that's the kind of word might be more fitting for this so that's just one example and you know it's not that every plugin you get is gonna have a sweet spot necessarily but on some of these you'll just notice really quick you know just with a little fiddling around that's where I got that fiddling around effect thing from. Just a little bit of fiddling around can go a long ways, and you don't have to necessarily have to dial in everything perfectly. Of course, be aware that, you know, if there's stuff that you just don't really know what you're doing, consult a manual, consult some of these sites and things I was talking about, read a book, <laughs> or ask a friend somebody that you know who's into music production as well. But anyway, that's all I wanted to go over in this video a little bit about the fiddle around effect. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed this one. I hope it's useful. And as always, be safe, stay well, and keep being creative.